Up in the morning with the rising sun. Gonna run all day into the running gets done. Morning, everybody. We are headed right now to SWAT school tryouts. Told you this uh, vlog season we're gonna be going to SWAT school. So in order to get into SWAT school, you have to go to SWAT uh, tryouts. So that's where we're headed right now. All right, guys, we're here at Moore Park which is right next to one of our fire stations. Right now, headed over to meet some of the SWAT guys. Just parked and uh, get briefed on what the day is going to entail. This is actually where I had my police agility test before I became a police officer at this park here. Brings back a little bit of memories. Little bit of memories. <laughs> guys know this guy right here Good officer Gauls back on the vlog how are you how's everything doing well doing well all right so what, who do we have over there so basically what you see is the uh, this is the instructor cadre for the uh, SWAT team okay the SWAT school that we have upcoming these are the, your uh, SWAT candidates which are all city of Miami police officers currently I believe we have 15 of them today can you can you explain what a cadre is? Sure, a cadre is a, uh, a primary instructor for the uh, SWAT school that we have upcoming in February okay that's the one that we're going to. How long is it before you're eligible to apply uh, for the SWAT team? So within policy here at the city of Miami, uh, probationary officers that uh, have 18 months of experience, uh, it's six months out of the academy and a year on the road, can come out and certified officers have to wait a year. Once they clear their probation, they're eligible to try out for the SWAT team. Right, so, they, so just to clarify, you can't apply to the police department for the SWAT position. Correct. You have to uh, go to the street, learn a little bit of patrol, pass probation. No! Pass probation. No! I can't say that. Pass probation, Woo! and then you're eligible. Right. So once you pass probation and you have uh, satisfactory scores on your uh, monthly evals, your yearly eval, you'll be cleared for uh, from probation to go ahead and try out for the SWAT team. Uh, the tryout is uh, going to be today. Following the tryout, there's an oral board. Uh, an interview where they actually speak to a panel of the staff members, uh, including upper staff of the department, along with uh, the higher echelon of the SWAT team, followed by the actual uh, attendance of the SWAT school. All right, looks like they're moving out. We're gonna go with them. So today, the common equipment that they're gonna bring, if you look at all the officers, they're in their uh, Class C uniform. That's the Miami Police blue SWAT shirt with their uh, black BDU pants, also a black riggers belt. They were asked to bring a gas mask along with a backpack and a change of clothes. The change of clothes is gonna entail uh, shorts, t-shirt, and running sneakers. That's gonna be for the pool portion of the tryout and the running portion of the tryout. As you see the uh, the candidates uh, strolling by, you realize that everybody here who's currently a member of the SWAT team has gone through this exact same process, the exact same rigorous uh, structured process that we did to come on the team and you realize that a lot of work has been put into it our school is internationally renowned it's one of the toughest SWAT schools in the country it's three weeks long these candidates have to be fit in order to pass everything and become certified as a basic SWAT police officer what's the first obstacle so the first obstacle we're gonna do is gonna be the uh, wall climb okay that's the infamous wall basically what they do is they're gonna stand in front of the wall Hands down to their side, they have to actually clear the wall, coming up, and it's gonna be demonstrated by one of the instructors here. Okay, sounds good. All right guys, let's get over there now. So how many attempts do they get to complete this obstacle? Each candidate is going to be afforded uh, three opportunities to complete each obstacle. Uh, if they fail the first time, they're going to go ahead and tap two more opportunities. Once they fail the third time, they're disqualified from the rest of the evolutions and they're sound. Okay. 
So all it takes is one time to pass it. That's to pass it on the first time. But they get three attempts. Right. As you see there, the first candidate was uh, disqualified because he went too fast with the momentum. So what you see there is the candidate is able to jump over the wall. However, we're looking for attention to detail for him to climb it and come over it as was instructed exactly by the instructor. What are you guys doing now? We're taking the wall down now for the candidates. The uh, next exercise we're going to do is the uh, rope climb and the rope hang. So no, what, does this, what does this exercise simulate? So rope climb is going to simulate anything from your upper body, upper body strength, uh, whether it's climbing a wall or uh, fast roping from a helicopter when we do uh, helo operations. Basically when we go off the birds, you're going to have your whole kit on, which is your rifle, uh, your helmet, and your uh, Kevlar vest, along with all your ammunition. Uh, we want to see that you're able to support yourself with all that weight on, especially coming down with the technique, uh, everything is in a controlled manner. See that they're fastened up too for safety. Right, so they're uh, they're actually hooked into a safety line, which is ran by one of the instructors back there. Where if they were to let go of the rope, the instructor would immediately fall back, and it would hook the uh, the candidate in place, where then he can be dropped down safely to the ground. The next course is going to be a 45 second rope hang. At no time will you be allowed to use your legs in this evolution. All right? You get a grip as high as possible. You will jump up. <laughs> You will lock in place and you will hold for 45 seconds. Understood? The rope can either be between your legs or on your side. If it is between your legs, you must keep your legs open. Okay? In a sort of a straddle position. If it's on your side, I don't care what you do with your legs as long as you're not using your legs to help support your body weight. Understood? So here's how this should look. Either here, okay? Or on your side. At that point, I don't care what you do with your legs. If in the process of this evolution, you start coming down, as long as you do not touch the deck, you are okay. But you can hang here for 45 seconds, that is acceptable. <coughs> Well, obviously these activities uh, they look like they're very strenuous right. you got to be in good shape how long before you guys notify them that there's actually going to be these SWAT tryouts so before we notify them we'll actually put out a uh, official bulletin it's about two months out uh, officers do have uh, ample amount of time before that because we do post a open range day open shoot day uh, and an open PT session for them to come out 
that's about six months out that we'll actually start preparing the candidates. Uh, from that point on, they know to start preparing themselves physically for the course. If you, if you look at the majority of the candidates, you can tell that they, they've been physically preparing for this course. Uh, okay. They know the uh, rigorous process that it takes to become a uh, SWAT team member of the city of Miami. So this evolution is gonna consist of an officer starting at the first cone with a shotgun that is unloaded with a blank round in his hand. He's gonna low crawl from this position to the secondary cone, at which point he's gonna sprint to the first cone He's gonna chamber that first round into the shotgun, sprint to the next cone, where he's gonna drop down in the prone, utilizing that cone as a cover position, where he's gonna fire that round, immediately re-rack the shotgun. He's then gonna to sprint to the other cone where the wall is located. He'll jump the wall, come back down, stage the shotgun safely. From that point, he'll put his gas mask on, where he'll get a thumbs up from the cadre once he checks his seal. Seals check, he'll prep his chemical device where he'll throw it, the exercise ends. And what, what are these uh, movements or actions to mimic? So the shotgun course is basically to, to induce stress on the candidate, right. uh, both physically and mentally, to ensure that he does every portion of this event as demonstrated by the instructors, paying attention to detail on everything. Where to low crawl to, where to rack the weapon system, where to engage the weapon system from, and what to do once he gets to the wall. All right. Officer Gulls. Sir. Officer Guzman. Canada got DQ'd. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Right, so paying attention to detail is what we like to teach the candidates uh, from the first moment that they set foot in any type of a SWAT atmosphere. As you can see, the candidate came to this cone where he failed to re-rack the weapon system upon discharging, discharging the uh, blank round. Uh, in essence, basically what that means is he got to that wall, climbed the wall safely, Staged his weapon system, put his gas mask on, and then by the time he's going to engage a threat, he's got no ammunition in the weapon system. So you gotta pay attention to what you're doing and how every exercise is demonstrated. Yep, and um, every little detail counts. Every little detail counts, and every little detail is gonna save your life out here. All right, outstanding. So one thing we forgot to mention is this course, it was timed. Right, so the evolution is timed. It's a uh, one minute uh, standard time is what the candidates have to conduct it. All right, and it's on to the next, which is going to be? Uh, next will be the running portions of the tryout, okay. which will include the uh, 100 yard sprint, the 100 yard fireman carry, and the mile and a half run. All right, and that's gonna be conducted by the track where we started off? Right, so all of that. Right now we'll give the candidates time to change over their uniforms into PT gear running shoes uh, and go ahead and prepare for the, uh, the next events. All right. And Narino, line it up. What is this? It's gonna be a 100 yard sprint in 15 seconds. Pretty self-explanatory. gonna be a 100 yard fireman carry mm -hmm. sprint as well so this exercise the way it's conducted is the officers are doing a uh, what we call a fireman carry mm -hmm. uh, 
what that's going to be is that's going to induce physical stress on the officers which will be indicative of how they would carry uh, either a fallen officer or a fallen civilian uh, out of harm's way okay Every exercise that the candidates uh, are conducted or conduct out here um, are done so in such a fashion that their bodies uh, are meant to start deteriorating through the tryout. This is going to simulate a uh, call out that lasts 12, 13 hours, maybe with a barricade. You have all your equipment on, all your gear on. You know, ultimately, it's not our goal to fail candidates. It is our goal to push the candidates uh, to their threshold, uh, where once the physical portion of it is gone, they can push through with will and heart. All right. So uh, this is that was the end of their physical agility out here. Or are they are they still on the track? They got They're still on the track. Yeah. Right now, the candidates have been afforded the opportunity to uh, take a little break, get some water to hydrate. They're going to do the uh, mile and a half run now. That mile and a half run is going to be conducted in 12 minutes and under. Okay. So they have to make it by 12 minutes. Right. And the purpose behind that is we also want to ensure that the candidates have good cardio endurance uh, for the remainder of the not only the tryout but through the evolutions of the school we do do a lot of running okay all right so we're now uh, they're done here right so you just saw the uh, last candidate uh, run the mile and a half uh, from this point on, we're going to go ahead. The uh, candidates are going to be afforded an opportunity to get some water. From here, we're going to go to our next venue site, uh, which is the pool. All right. I'm going to head over there. This, that's at a different location, correct? That is at a different location than uh, where we're at right now. Okay. Headed over there now. All right. I'll see you over, over there. there. Yep. We're here at uh, Hadley Pool here in the city of Miami. Okay. And. Uh, the candidates, as you see, they, they're uh, stacked up over here on the left in the uh, stands. Okay. Uh, what they're getting ready to do is the uh, water portion of the tryout. Uh, being in a water-based environment as South Florida, we also need to ensure that all of our candidates, as well as all of our active SWAT team members, um, have cardio endurance in the pool as well. Okay. So they're getting ready, stretching out. We're going to hook up some GoPros. And then... Uh, We'll be right back. All right. Uh, what you see right now is the candidates doing the uh, first pool exercise. Uh, it's eight laps. Any stroke besides backstroke uh, that they can do, and this is not a timed event. This event is just basically to see that the, the candidates have uh, pool cardio, okay. water cardio, uh, to ensure that once they become operational on the team, in case we conduct any waterborne exercises, uh, something happens to them in the water, they're able to swim. Uh, to somewhere safe or they're able to safely evacuate somebody from the water as well. Okay. Where? What's the next exercise? Next exercise is going to be the uh, tower drill. Okay. Uh, what we expect from the students is they're going to show up, hang right, hang 10 right over the lip, okay. uh, 10 toes, and uh, they're going to enter the water in a safe manner as instructed by the cadre. Uh, this is basically to evaluate if they have a fear of heights uh, and this is also a stress induced <coughs> exercise. Okay.
All right, guys, you can see this is the last evolution. This is the 15-minute uh, water tread. From here, we're heading back over to the uh, station. I'm heading over there right now. Make sure that everything's prepped. All right. See you guys in a little bit. Later. All right, so arrival at the gym down here. Um, can you explain a little bit about this step of the way? Sure, so first they got their uh, weight, okay. the actual weight scale. Okay. They're required to bench press 20 pounds over their body weight. Uh, so once we calculate how much they weigh, we do that on the bench, add 20 pounds to that. After the bench, they're required to do five pull-ups with 25 extra pounds mm -hmm. on it. Uh, that's distributed by that weight belt that you see over there with a the 25 pound weight. Uh, following that, they will do 42 push-ups in a minute and 39 sit-ups in a minute. Okay. Uh, both timed exercises. Uh, also with a leg extension exercise, uh, leg press that's 100 pounds over their body weight. Okay. Uh, if the candidates make it past that point, uh, we move on to the range assessment. Real quick, what was the time between the swimming? There's not much time, they right? Haven't had many breaks. No, it's just uh, travel time. Just travel time. So travel time from Hadley Pool to here. Maybe, maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on how light traffic is. All right. So, Officer Galls, what's the next? Oh, sorry. Officer Galls. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, this is one of the uh, FDLE qualification courses of fire, shooting from the 25 yard line all the way to the three. All right. Candidates are given an opportunity now to change back over, uh, put their BDU uniform back on, their gun belt. Uh, they're going to come in here, change out their ammunition from duty ammo to range ammo, and we're going to run them through the uh, qualification course of fire. If the candidates do make it past this course of fire, they'll receive their invitation to a uh, formal oral interview, uh, which will take place next week. Uh, and from there, if they advance from there, they'll participate in the uh, SWAT school. Uh, Officer Diaz, so you have a ring on your finger. Yes, I do. Oh, and your last name is Diaz. Yes, it is. All right. Similar to uh, Sergeant Diaz. See, oh, you guys have the same last name? Yeah, we share a lot more than just the last name. Oh, and you have a ring. Yeah. All right. And two kids. And two kids. And a house. <laughs> What's going on now? So right now the uh, supervisors are tallying up the uh, scores for the individual candidates. Okay. Uh, once they tally them up, they'll come back with the results. Candidates that uh, have passed, 
at this point will be moving forward uh, in the process. Candidates that did not pass the qualification course of fire will be afforded two more opportunities. All right. Thanks for everything. Absolutely. Thanks for Thank explaining, you. giving us the rundown of what's going on. See you in three weeks. Absolutely. See you in three weeks. All right, guys. Three weeks. Later, guys. See you. Later. So they're pretty much done inside. A um, couple guys are finishing up their course. So you guys got to see what it takes to actually get into SWAT school. So SWAT school starts in February. As you saw, these guys have been working out. They've been gearing up, focused, ready to go through the SWAT school. It's gonna be three weeks. We're gonna be there. Should be three vlogs out of that, one per week. Looking forward to it. Gonna start getting in shape, gonna start running a little bit. So that's that. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And we'll see you next vlog. I'm out, adios.